Hello and welcome back to Art by the Lake. Today we're doing uh, what I call sort of the Hubble telescope uh, of dirty pour painting. We're going to do an 11 color painting. We're going to use, uh, you can see over here we've got a little bit of yellow, orange, red, a magenta, a deep purple, I'm sorry, a deep blue and a deep purple. Over here we have a black, a white, a gray, a blue, and a green. Uh, we're going to attempt to do sort of a Hubble telescope view into space. And the colors here on the left, your right, these are going to be used to make um, perhaps some planets or a big mess in the middle of the canvas. So we have a 12 by 16 canvas. We have it up on push pins. We have painted the edges black. We've dumped some black paint in the corners because the corners are always tough to tilt into. Um, and we're going to do sort of a swirl pour. You can see we've got a large Pyrex container here. Um, and we're hoping to get sort of a space look here. So without further ado, um, this one may take a while, so there may be a couple video segments. So I'm going to pour into here. We're going to start with the deep purple. Our paint mixture is two parts Floetrol, one part paint, and one part distilled water. And we have a drop or so of coconut milk serum in just about every color. I don't think we put any in the black or the white. So I'm going to pour these slowly into our main pour cup. I want them to stay pretty distinct if I can do that. So you'll see I'm going to pour them down the edge of the glass and we'll pour slowly. I may do a little bit of a swirl when I push these out onto the canvas. Haven't really decided that yet. I like to see how the paint starts to behave and then I can decide whether we're going to swirl or not swirl. So, as always, uh, if you have any questions, you can comment on YouTube or you can email me at artbythelake at gmail.com. I like to go into these paintings with just sort of a rough idea of what I want. I don't like to get too planned out. What I really enjoy about the flow art or fluid painting is sort of that randomness that you can't control. So I don't want to plan it out too much. I like the chaos. So we're putting all of these colors directly into the cup and I will probably end with um, just the yellow and see how that works out. I want the background to be sort of a dark purple black color. I will lead with black on the canvas. I have that in a separate cup. Again, as you can see, not really planned out. I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens. So, so far we have most of our colors in. And let's get a little black out onto the canvas. That's just to get the fun started. So I'm going to switch hands here because I'm right handed and it takes a while to slowly pour this out. So I want my strong hand in play. You get a good idea of what that looks like in the cup. And so, without further ado, let's start a very slow, gradual pour. So far I'm doing just a little bit of a swirl. I like how that looks. You'll notice I'm sort of alternating between just a regular pour and a bit of a swirl pour. 
There is a method to that madness. Whenever I see a new color introduced, I like to swirl it a little bit. Just to spread it down into the bottom part of the picture. You see we've made it into the blue. And we still have yellow and magenta and orange going pretty strong. We will be tilting this one. I do want to get it moving around the, the canvas. You see right now the blue is pretty dominant in the center. My hope is that the purple is dominant in this one. But we'll see. Again, we've left some colors off to our left here to be able to make some planets. As scary as that may sound. So very blue dominant right now. Not a lot of cell activity going on. And as you can see, the purple is just starting to hit. I expected the purple to be much more dominant. The purple was what we put more of than anything in this one. So I'm kind of hoping as we get to the end that the purple stakes center stage for us. And you can see that's starting to happen. Okay, we're almost to the bottom of it here. I like keeping it moving. We get as much paint as we can out of it. Okay. So there it is. That's our, uh, our sort of outer space look. We're going to try some tilting here. I will probably hit it with the torch first to see if we can wake up some cells. I like to torch first, tilt second. You can see we're getting some pretty interesting cells. All in all, the blue is a little bit stronger than I had planned. but still very good. So we'll backfill with a little black here in the corners just to keep things moving. And then we'll get ready for the tilting fun. Okay, so we've got a lot going on here. It's actually pretty interesting as it is. Um, we're going to have to move things around quite a bit with our tilting, but so far I'm liking what I see. I like over here, so I'm going to bring it back to this side a little bit. Try to get some more coverage up here and stretch out this orange that I like so much. And that'll give us a little bit more blue to work with as far as planets. Okay. Interesting. Definitely interesting. So let's, uh, let's get some black down in the corners here again to see if we can help out with some of that flow. I want to leave some black on this one, see if we can do that. 
going to use my stick to smooth some of this around. And before we start the planets, I'm probably going to take a quick second to reset our video so that we have enough time. I think the planetary portion of this one could take some time. And we're running at about 12 minutes now. So I'll reset before we go too much further. Okay, let's reset the camera and we'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So we have some interesting movement here. So far I like what I'm seeing. I thought that we would have much more deeper, dark, mostly black kind of thing going on here. And we didn't, so we ended up with sort of the blue purpley kind of things. So I'm, I am going to try to introduce into this area and maybe this area um, a bit of a planetary kind of thing. So we'll see if we can do that. I have some white and gray over here that I'll use to make a bit of a moon. And this is a, a first for me, so I'm not really sure how this is going to work out, if it works out well then we'll be very happy. If it doesn't, then we'll still be very happy. So you can see there's sort of the base for the first planet. And then out here we'll do the base for a second planet. And you see the white sinks quite a bit. So it's hard to make sort of a round shape. But that's okay. This is space after all, right? When you're dipping into these colors, be sure to get a napkin because you don't want to blend colors that you aren't intending to blend. And I'm just sort of trying to round out the edges a bit here. And in this perspective, we're sort of, we sort of have Earth off in the distance and a planetary moon blob up close. So we're going to have to mess around with this one quite a bit. But it's interesting. It's a good effect. Our moon blob has drifted quite a bit. Our Earth blob has sort of stayed stationary. We're going to mess with the straw a bit.
Okay. So we want to in introduce some sort of star-like things out here in the negative space area. So we're going to just drop them in. And we'll drop in several colors. Right now we're doing white. When it gets quiet, that means I'm usually trying to figure out what I'm doing next. So, sometimes you get exactly what you want, sometimes you don't. <laughs> I would call today an interesting experiment. But, we will continue forward with it. I am going to tilt again and see what I can do over in this area. I like over here, but I don't like over here as much. So we'll try to run that closer to or off the edge of the canvas. Okay, it's getting interesting. So we'll introduce some more of the orange in here. You can see some of the white has sunk. That's common. The pigments in, in titanium white seem to be very heavy and they seem to like to sink. Once you get used to that, you can adapt and you can change what you want. So there's no rhyme or reason to it here. We're really just kind of playing around and seeing how things go. I have some ideas here. Sometimes those ideas work. Sometimes they don't. I would call this one a, a maybe. <laughs> What I have learned though is that the blue floats quite a bit. I'm really surprised how much the blue has stayed on top. But you'll see here in a minute you'll get an idea of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. You'll see with a lot of these things that if you get areas that you're just not fond of or that don't work the way you wanted them to work, there is no eraser in fluid art, but there is a good way to stretch things. And sometimes that stretching can fix problems and create some happy accidents. So as you can see we've decided to blow the moon off the edge of the canvas. Um, I thought that the the planetary pieces would round themselves out a little bit better and create more uniform round shapes and they didn't. So we use the flow art eraser and push them off the edge. <laughs> I 
That is the beauty of fluid art. You can make whatever you want and erase whatever you want. Okay, there. How's that? Get a good look. So we're going to hit it with the torch and then we're going to call this one mostly done. I think as far as names for this one, if you have an idea, let me know. Right now I'm leaning toward calling it something like the, the Hubble accident. <laughs> um, We'll torch around with it here. Keep your eye on the time-lapse video at the end of this. See how you like it. We are Art by the Lake. You can find us on YouTube at Art by the Lake. Please subscribe. Please tell your friends to subscribe. Um, if you're interested in any of the products that we use in this painting, look down at the bottom of our listing and you can see uh, a way to buy them through Amazon. So you can get the exact same things that we're using. And Please, if you're interested in these paintings, uh, you can find us at Art by the Lake on Etsy and Art by the Lake on eBay. And those links will be at the end of this video, at the end of the time lapse. We'll put in some still pictures so you can see how this migrates. But again, we are Art by the Lake. This is Hubble Accident. And uh, thank you for tuning in.